Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be doing my end of the year reflections for my sixth grader part two. So in my previous video, you guys already seen, I did my end of the year curricular review with my oldest and sharing her review on Oak Metal Grade 6. However, we did not only use Oak Metal Grade 6, we used other resources in our homeschool. And I wanted to make a separate video to go ahead and give you guys my thoughts and reviews of the other pieces of curricula that we did add in our homeschool along with Oak Metal Grade 6. So um, I really hope you guys are enjoying my curricular review videos that I have been sharing with you guys um, on my channel. These have been so much fun to make and I really hope that they're helpful. Um, I feel like the curricular pick videos, although they are fun and exciting, I feel like you get the most benefit from seeing the review videos and really seeing how uh, that curricula played out in, you know, like our homeschools and things like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start off with math. So for math, uh, my oldest daughter's or my sixth grader's primary math that she used this year was Matthew C. She started Matthew C. Zeta over the summer and she completed this level in December. And then we began doing Matthew C. Pre-algebra in January and we got to the halfway point of this at the end of her sixth grade year. So you guys, I love Matthew C. I need to make a separate video all about Matthew C, really giving you guys the in-depth view of it. I think I am going to go ahead and do that for you guys, because at this point, I have completed with my oldest, Epsilon, Zeta, and then we're halfway done with pre-algebra. So I really feel like I have enough levels under my belt to really give you guys like a good review on Matthew C. And um, I have some quirks about it, but overall, I feel like the mastery approach to mathematics and how it just simplifies math. It just made it be seamless for my oldest daughter. Um, although I will say this year, I did give my oldest daughter a standardized test because in the state of Georgia, this was a testing year for us. And I will say this, you guys, not to scare anybody, but her math scores was not as high as they was when she was doing Saxon. Uh, we did Saxon and math, you see, were the primary math curricula that I have been most consistent with in my homeschool. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to be honest. I just think that, you know, math may not be everyone's jam or subject. At the end of the day, she's learning, she's growing, she's uh, gaining knowledge, and she has confidence in math now. And I think that's all that matters. Um, I just know that moving forward, I know how to tweak the areas that she needs to uh, develop more in her mathematics skills. And I do need to sup continue to supplement math, you see. Um, I personally believe, and this is just my opinion, that math you see uh you do need to supplement this curriculum based on my experience but like i said i will make a completely separate video on math you see um, i will give you more in-depth review of it but overall this is what my daughter needed in our homeschool she's flourishing in it and um, i have been enjoying it one thing i will say coming from zeta to pre-algebra once we hit into pre-algebra um, my daughter needed me a lot more math is my strong subject i loved math in school i know i was that crazy person <laughs> but um i have been really partnering with my daughter working side by side with her with math now that she's in pre-algebra and it's okay but i will say i do not feel confident after pre-algebra to be this hands-on with mathematics so this will be our last level of math you see that we are going to use so for high school we're going to be picking another math curriculum that's going to uh, get her through, I guess, her high school years. But overall, I'm happy with our switch to Math UC and what this is going on our second year using it. And it's been it's been great. So that's all I really have to say about that one. Now, uh, like I was saying before, I did test her at the end of um, this sixth grade year. We use the in in wea map growth test from homeschool boss and it was great if you guys want to know like our experience when it came to standardized testing in a separate video let me know i know it's kind of like late everyone's kind of like past that point right now everyone's in their summer but if you do want to know about our experience doing um standardized testing in my homeschool just let me know and i will make a separate video ashley from gathering grounded has some really really great videos on standardized testing in particular the map test i'll link her video down below um, where she went into detail 
well. She, that was a great one. I, I liked it watching her video with that one. But um, I enjoyed using the map test in our homeschool. I love the breakdown of the map test. It really gave me like detail and line by line the specific areas and the standards uh, that I can work on with my oldest when it comes to math and ELA. That's all I tested her in. I didn't test her in the science this year. Uh, but I seen that because we were doing math, you see her scores in geometry and complex numbers wasn't as strong. So over the summer, I added in the supplemental workbooks from Kumon, which is Intro to Geometry. We have been just doing one page a day for her to brush up on those geometry skills because I will say math, you see, because it's mastery, it doesn't have that much geometry. It's not as, it doesn't have as much geometry as Saxon had in it. I'm just going to be honest with you guys, but uh, using these workbooks along with the pre algebra over the summer I think it's going to help her retain her knowledge when it comes to geometry uh, at this point so she can uh, remember the basics like you know volume uh, metrics measurements things like that just the basics when it comes to geometry so uh, I just added in these cheapy Kumon books I love these ones you guys in our homeschool uh, moving forward since I got those results from the standardized test now, as far as Matthew C goes, uh, the manipulatives for the Zeta and pre-algebra were these um, algebra and decimal inserts. I will let you guys know she did not use these as much as she used the fraction overlays in Epsilon. And uh, for some kiddos, they may use this, but I really will say I could have saved on my $60 <laughs> on these manipulatives because she rarely used them in this level. Um, so I'm going to be completely honest with that. Now, as far as the blocks for my younger kiddos, the big box right Right here we use those all the time so I'm happy I have the big set but up in these higher levels she didn't use the manipulative so yeah now as far as language goes you guys I did add in uh, grammar along with our Oak Meadow because Oak Meadow's grammar was more of a mastery approach they didn't have like really daily grammar practice in it so what we did was first before we started fix it grammar we completed Rod and Staff Grammar 6 and you guys like I really really enjoy Rod and Staff Grammar Rod and Staff is um, mastery yet spiral. So each chapter we focus on one part of speech. So one chapter will be just nouns, verbs, adjectives, uh, pronouns, and it has the same format in each of the levels. At this point, we have completed four, five, and six of Rod and Staff. And I love the diagramming of sentences. This is a Christian curriculum. Um, it's not secular. I do prefer using secular curriculars in my homeschool. However, I didn't mind using this curricula because um, I I just loved the foundational skills that it laid. This is more so for like a classroom setting, but I will say I did modify it a lot by using our dry erase board when it came to her diagramming the sentences. We did a lot of these uh, lessons orally in the textbook. And then if it was something she needed extra practice, would I would use these uh, extra practice sheets. Uh, for her when it came to a grammar concept that I felt like she needed to like get the skills reinforced and then after each chapter I would give her a test. So I really enjoy Rod and Staff. I really feel like Rod and Staff has been my preferred grammar curricula uh, of all times. Uh, I do love fix -It Grammar you guys but I will say fix -It Grammar has always just been like a review over the concepts she already learned in daily practice. So we finished Rod and Staff in September. So I needed like a daily review grammar to get us through the rest of the year. And again, we use the Fix It Grammar, the, uh, what is this, uh, Mowgli and Shere Khan level four book. And I think she only asked me maybe one or two questions the rest of the year when it came to grammar. Like I said, grammar is her strong point and I'm happy we did use this, but I will be honest, she didn't learn anything from fix -It Grammar, just, you know, for this particular child. Uh, I do feel like fix -It Grammar, it's great. I love how each week and lesson, you know, you go over your uh, one part of speech and it slowly builds. I like how the kids are editing the sentences. I like the copywork aspect of it. And I really will say um, her editing those sentences, it really helped her in editing her own writing and seeing the errors that she made. And that's one thing I will say fix -It grammar is great for, is for allowing the kids to be able to see and correct the grammar and apply it to their own writing, which is excellent. So um, I did love fix -It grammar and I enjoy it and I will continue to use it in my homeschool. But like I said, uh, my main grammar that I loved for uh, my sixth grader has always been Rod and Staff. Now, of course, we finished up IEW Structure and Style. We did half of this during our school year. If you guys want to know um, IEW, how I feel about it, you guys, 
I love this curriculum. This is our second year using IEW Structure and Style. Um, how I used IEW Structure and Style this year is that when she didn't have a writing assignment in her Oak Meadow, we would do a writing assignment in IEW. So she only did this every other week. So we completed 12 weeks of this over the course of our homeschool year. The video lessons, she loves them. They can be lengthy. Um, I definitely will say maybe at this upper age, they might be fine with the videos, but definitely for like the elementary age, I really feel like the videos were lengthy. In the beginning of the videos, he does do like the jokes and he lets the kiddos hear the other kids' papers. And I do feel like it's room in the level 1A for you to be able to skip the like I guess the beginning jargon part of the video and get to the meat of the video to really shorten it for your elementary kids that's doing the 1A but at this level my daughter she just enjoyed it sometimes she said she would skip them him reading the papers but for the most part she would watch the video um, I just like how it really takes the writing pressure off of me and seeing the growth in my daughter as a writer from doing level 1A now to level 1B it's just been great we're finishing this off over the course of the summer and um, I'm so happy I decided to continue to use IEW. I didn't know if Oak Meadow would have too much writing for her but for this daughter she just excels in writing and I definitely want to continue to challenge her in that area because she definitely wants to study a field within uh, English writing is what she does want to major in in college so um giving her this area to be able to flourish has been great in our homeschool so i love it if you guys want to check out my uh 1a review i'll link it down below for you guys and i definitely will make an end of the uh, course review when we complete the 1b and let you guys know how it worked out and if i had any quirks or my opinions have changed about the program once we complete it so yeah now, as far as vocabulary goes, vocabulary was a skill. I definitely knew I needed to hone in with my daughter. Um, so I made sure I just grabbed a few vocabulary supplements to help her really retain vocabulary. At the end of our testing, she did great in vocabulary. Uh, so I definitely know what we use in our homeschool really, really helped her out. And I'm so, so, so happy about that. So we use vocabulary cartoons. And again, we're still working in this over the summer. She used her school nest notebook. And uh, what she would do is she would like, write out the word she'll do a copy work sentence uh, she would write the synonyms antonyms and she made a journal of all of her vocabulary words using the vocabulary cartoons you don't need to do the journal aspect of it this just made it fun for uh, my daughter but I love these SAT power um, word word power studies because it gave them like funny little uh, I guess like uh, sayings for to help them remember the word and she really really retained the vocabulary and and uh, this is just fun. These are definitely great like morning starters for vocabulary. Uh, so I enjoy using this uh, vocabulary for her. Uh, the next set of vocabulary that I used was we dabbled into daily word letters for her. This was just like, I guess, corny brain breaks is what I would say. I really don't know if she really retained much vocabulary from this but it was just fun little ladder puzzles she could do and I did this for the first part of the semester because I knew I just wanted to enhance that area once we got into second semester uh, what I did was I picked up my word roots level one I definitely know she would not have been ready to do this at the beginning of her sixth grade year but second semester she was ready for it especially after having practice with the uh, SAT uh, vocabulary cartoon word power so I was so happy when I added this in our homeschool in January you guys, I seen so much growth in her vocabulary using the word roots. Word roots focus on the Greek and Latin root words. I love how they break up the words and it's just the repetition that they do uh, in these lessons. I like how after every two lessons, there's a review, they're writing sentences. Um, I don't know what it is about the Critical Thinking Company, but I really enjoy a lot of their workbooks, you guys. Uh, and this one, uh, it did not uh, leave me underwhelmed. I definitely seen growth in my daughter and and I loved it. Uh, we got about maybe three thirds of the way through with this book and we are going to finish this off in her seventh grade year and then move on to the next levels. This is definitely something that is in my homeschool to stay, especially for this kiddo. Uh, we're just going to do as many levels as we can, uh, but I love this one. Um, something else that I used from the critical company, which was something that we passed over from fifth grade, was she completed her uh, reading detective, uh, higher order of critical thinking. This is like, um, this is really, really good for that 
inferencing skill. It's really, really good for allowing the kids to really critically think about uh, the passages that they're reading. I like that the critical thinking company, their reading comprehension doesn't just have multiple choice. There's filling in the blanks. I love how after they ask a question, they have to refer back to what paragraph they actually got that answer from. I will say this was not my daughter's favorite when she first started doing this um, in the fifth grade. However, uh, when we picked this back up in second semester to prepare her for her standardized test, I definitely seen so much growth in her reading comprehension, the fluidness of it, those inferencing skills, those critical thinking skills. I love how this book took real passages from like literature, like uh, the, the Witch of Blackbird Pond, Allen of the Blue Dolphin. They had like a lot of nonfiction. Uh, she read about like Jackie Robertson, Booker T. Washington. Uh, they talked about plants, science. It was so many different excerpts that they used and it really, really kept the kids' brains fresh. And um, I'm definitely continuing to use this in my homeschool for my younger ones uh, as they get up here when they will be ready to do the first level of this I think this starts off maybe in the third grade I think this level starts off don't quote me but I definitely know um, I will use this for my younger ones when they rise up as far as um, my oldest I think this is going to be the last level of reading comprehension because she is going to now get into more like literary analysis she's going to be doing more novel studies these upcoming years I don't think I'm going to need to test her comprehension because I'm going to have that when we do our literature studies but this was great in prepping for uh, testing so if you do have to uh, test in your state I definitely would say grab this one spend the extra money on this book not necessarily the cheapy reading comprehension books and you will see value of this in your homeschool so I love this one love the critical thinking company now as far as history goes I did supplement history um, in the beginning of our first semester. This was my oldest daughter's first time doing a cycle through ancient times. And I just really wanted to try out this curriculum to really be honest with you guys. So I had the digital format of Curiosity Chronicles Ancient Times. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put like a screenshot of some of the, how the textbook and things like that looks on the side of my screen because um, again, I have this all digital. Uh, so you can kind of see how the textbooks looks, but my daughter absolutely loved doing Curiosity Chronicles. What we did was whatever time period we were in in our Oak Meadow. So like let's say if we were talking about ancient Egypt, I would pull out the um, units on ancient Egypt and we would listen to uh, the book from Curiosity Chronicles to kind of pair with it. She did the mapping and she did all of like the activity pages when it came to Curiosity Chronicles. And it really just beefed up our ancient history experience. And I'm happy that we did both. Did we have to? We absolutely didn't have to do both, but it was just fun. And I'm happy I tried out this curriculum with my oldest because this is definitely something I'm coming back to with my younger kiddos. We are definitely going to do Curiosity Chronicles. Um, I like how the dialogue is not like a traditional textbook that you're reading. It's a dialogue form between two characters called Ted and Mona, and they go back and forth giving historical facts. And um, I listened to, we listened to the audible version, but you can read the textbook, you know, between you and your kid, especially if, you know, it's just you and one other kiddo, uh, that can make it fun too, but we primarily listen to it. Uh, at the end of each lesson, they had like some um, vocabulary, they had like some critical thinking questions, some uh, reading comprehension questions, and again, the math work, the coloring pages. They always had like fun activities and, and engaging games and things you can do. Uh, we didn't do those uh, things within this curriculum. When I do it my second go around, I'm definitely gonna do that with my younger kiddos, but uh, we just mainly focused on the meat and it really was so much fun. This particular level is geared for grades one to three. However, in my experience after completing it, I definitely can say you can do it with a first through a sixth grader is what I would say that this beginning ancient um, times is geared towards. But overall, it was it was really, really fun. And I really, really enjoyed doing Curiosity Chronicles. If you guys, again, want me to make a dedicated video all to Curiosity Chronicles, I will, but it was great. Her history notebook is fat and she had so much fun doing this. As far as science goes, we started off our homeschooling year doing Oak Meadows Life Science. And the only reason why I stopped the Oak Meadows Life Science really was because it was too teacher intensive. And I really should have, like going back, thinking about this, I really wish that I would have just made it work because I really enjoy Oak Meadow just overall. And I enjoy the science and how it's laid out. But I, I should have like dug in deep. 
However, I just wanted my daughter to have a science that she can do more so independently. Uh, she was really focused in this year. Like again, we had a heavy history and writing year is really what I would say our focus had was this year. So um, I, I kind of did have to lighten up, you know, in one area. So you guys, I already had this on my shelf, which was the Apology is Exploring Creation and uh, Physics. Uh, curricula on my shelf and um, I pulled this out. It was just like, you know, I needed something for her to be able to do independently. I will say, like uh, I said before, I do prefer using more like secular curriculas. This is a Christian uh, science, uh, Christianism science curricula, which, you know, again, I don't mind. I feel like in this subject area of chemistry and physics, it really to really be honest, I really felt like it was more neutral. It really didn't have like a heavy biblical emphasis in the curricula. Like again, I don't mind using Christian curriculums, but when it comes to science, I do want more of a, I guess a, a wider net to be able to cover when it comes to science. Um, this was independent. This did allow my daughter to really practice on the note taking skills. Um, she really utilized the notebook a lot and it really helped her be able to like read the science, understand the text that she was reading, and work on those note-taking skills that I really wanted her to hone in on this year. So I definitely will say for that, it was great. Um, I loved how the information was presented in more of like a narrative format. Uh, and it didn't, it wasn't dull. You know, sometimes science can be dull. And I loved how it read really, really easily. Sometimes we would uh, read it and then other times we would listen to it with the audible. Uh, the experiments was really, really fun, you guys. I definitely will give them top notch. The experience was great. Um, I will say the experience in this book was really scattered. So when we first started off doing the curricula, it was a lot of experiments, a lot of fun. But as we were getting towards like the middle and the end, the experiments kind of like, you know, lacked off, which, you know, it's okay. Uh, but I will say I wish the experiments was more evenly distributed through the curricula. Um, but overall, I will say out of all of the science curriculums I ever used in my homeschool, my daughter said this was her absolute favorite. So <laughs> that definitely said something. Um, will we continue with the Apologia series moving forward? I don't know because next year we are going to be doing Oak Meadow Science and in high school I don't know if uh, it if we will continue using the Apologia series in high school but it's definitely on the table because she loved it and at the end of the day I will say even though I do have preferences in certain things uh, I do want to continue to bring curricula and pieces in our homeschool that's going to aid my kids and it's going to work out for us. I loved how uh, all of the Apologia curricula does have a lab kit because you guys like science is my my weak area and having that lab kit with everything in it we were just like on the ball with science and I'm, I'm really really proud of myself so um like again this definitely it was a hit uh, it wasn't the necessarily the direction I wanted to go in our homeschool year, but it worked out. So, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, what can I say? But um, you guys, this is my end of the year curricular review part two for the other pieces of curricula that we used in my homeschool for my sixth grader. I definitely will say as much as I try to be like a minimalist when it comes to my curriculum, I'm just going to be honest and say I really don't think I ever will be a minimalist. I do like pulling in a lot of resources and I know for some this may seem like a lot but it just worked really really well for my oldest daughter. It worked well for us in our homeschool and I've seen so much growth in my daughter and I think I've seen so much growth this year was because I really was consistent. Other than science, I didn't have any curriculum switches for her. What we started off from the beginning, we ended off and I'm so proud of us for being consistent. And I definitely know moving forward, being consistent in my curricula and my choices really helped me hone in and focus in on the skills I wanted my daughter to learn. And um, I had to learn that the hard way. It's, you know, sometimes you do want to switch things out. Sometimes you switch curricula out a little bit too soon before really diving in deep into it. And I learned that lesson the hard way. But this year, uh, really, even when I was having quirks about things, sticking it through really just helped us have a great year. So uh, you guys, I really hope you enjoy watching my end of the year sixth grade curricula review. Um, I'm so happy you guys, it's summer. I've been having fun making more videos for you guys and I hope you've been enjoying them too. So as always, you guys, I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.